All right, it's harvest time of our wheatgrass in our first round of growing mat versus soil trials. You don't really need to see me. You, we're gonna focus on the wheatgrass, so let's take a closer look at that. Now I've talked a lot about things. I'm just gonna recap where we're at. We are uh, using a 10 by 20 uh, uh, hemp fiber mat in a paper pot tray. These are have been growing for 10 days. This is day 10 or 11, so it's a much longer cycle. Overall crop growth is looking really good. We didn't see any wilting. We see no signs of uh, nutrient deficiencies. Really happy with things. So get a pretty good look at the crop there. See some slightly higher growth on the outsides. Could be the edge effect that there's a bit more rooting space there. So we, we already can get a sense that there is potential for more growth. Overall, this growth looks uh, lower than what I would usually get. But it's pretty good, um, but it's also several days longer. Uh, I usually do wheatgrass in seven to eight days. Today we're at day 10 or 11. Uh, 9th, 10, 11, 12, 13, We are at day 10 today. So that's a long cycle. I can handle that in my home system, but in a commercial system for wheatgrass, that would be too long for me. But I'm not going to say, oh no, fiber mats take too long to grow. We started with a method that we know, which is how we grow in soil. And we're going to try that, and we've tried it to get a sense of things. We see things are growing slower, so we just need to see where to adjust things. So we'll get to that in the next trial. So what now I'm going to, I'm going to do now is cut to this, and then actually what we can do is take a look at the surface, take a look at the roots in a bit of detail here. Now, one of the reasons I really do not like this idea of fiber mats or using a tall tray of soil and only, only filling it halfway with soil is it's really difficult to cut the, the, the crop right to the base. And when I do wheatgrass, I generally cut it right along the soil surface so I can maximize how much I'm getting and the stems at the bottom are quite dense. So I'm a little irked about that. And it's why I talked about earlier potentially putting the mat on the bottom of the tray and having the tray upside down so I wouldn't have to worry about that. The sunflower looks like I'll be able to pull the mat right out of the tray and I could do the harvest that way. But with this wheatgrass, like these roots are in here really well. So me trying to pull this mat out of here to do a harvest is really gonna damage it. So, so anyways, let's stop whining about that. And turn on my scale here so we can weigh it as we go. And let's just do a cut. My knife is not as sharp as I would like. And I also, just the way, so I can angle it down and get down there pretty good, but not, not as cleanly as I would like. And in here I can get in a little better now that I've got the edge cut. Um, horribly, uh, horrible sharpening on this. I'm gonna give that, I just gave it a little hone, but okay, let's, just get, let's just get through this. I really prefer a sharp knife. I've not been maintaining this knife that well, but also not that bad. Uh, but wheatgrass is actually very, very hard on knives. The cellulose in it, I think, really dulls them really quick. So, oh, I am not happy with that. <laughs> One of the risks with a dull knife is you push harder, and it's a much higher risk of uh, cutting yourself. Atrocious. I'm embarrassed about that. Okay. So in here, so this is uh, about 178 grams. That's about half the yield I would expect. So very, very much not happy with that. Again, still got some things to figure out. Uh, slower growth maybe, but having that lower yield at the 10-day mark is also um, something to consider. So I'm going to get a few good juices out of that. So it's definitely going to ruin a few mornings. But uh, yeah, that's okay. So here we are uh, looking at the surface here. I don't see any signs of mold. Uh, yeah, little bits in here, a little bit in here. But this is, this is what I expect to see on an older wheatgrass tray. It's another reason I like to get uh, the crop cycled through really quickly is mold will eventually settle in. But again, uh, the mold is on the surface. I'm not seeing anything on the, on the stems. I kind of noticed that as I was cutting it off. And this is for personal use, and I, I've never really had mold issues, so I'm not really concerned here. Now let's actually, just for fun, I'm going to flip this over. 
So you can see the kind of root growth we're getting here from the wheatgrass. Again, the paper pot trays have many, many little holes along the whole tray. Unlike the 1020 trays, which have just a few laser slit holes in different positions. So we really see a lot of root growth below, uh, below the tray, not actually on the mat itself. So we will come back here and I am just going to try and peel this mat up. And we can see that comes out of there pretty good. So this is actually coming off here really nicely. Uh, and one reason being it's still quite wet. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want this to dry out because then it's really going to probably stick. But yeah, that came out really cleanly. So this actually is now a really clean tray. Uh, all I really need to do is spray it down. And you can see, you can really see the root growth that's happening there and that happens in these crops. So it's quite incredible you get this much growth without, a, without, a, um, without soil. So that is it. So our, our lessons here from our first trial are, um, uh, one, we need to be careful about the heat mat because we did see damage on the roots in, in the early part. Turning that off may have helped that, but it lowered the temperature, which means that might have slowed down growth a little bit. We're in the fall here and it's pretty cool and we don't keep the house super warm. So uh, that, that heat mat is a way of boosting growth. So one way I think I can mitigate that, as I said, was to have a bit more water in the tray all the time. This is quite wet and this sort of wetness in soil to me is a red flag for disease. But I, maybe I'm going to overcome that and I'm just going to say maybe that's not going to apply the same way with this fiber mat because you've got the mat above and the roots below. And so keeping water in the, so in the tray below isn't going to keep that mat above saturated and we're not going to see that. So we can play with that. Uh, again, the, the, the seeding density looked okay. So uh, the longer cycle I can handle, but having a long, longer cycle and a significantly lower yield is difficult to deal with. So I need to look at that. So what I'm going to do for the next trial is I'm going to cut this mat into four sections. We're going to put it in here. We'll have a bit of space between them. One we're going to grow just the same way we've done it and the other three are going to get a different uh, organic fertilizer treatment. So probably what I'll do, I have to think about how to do that because I, you know the fertilizer from here is going to, it's, it's going to move around a bit. And I don't really have the space to do individual little trays right now. So I'm going to try to find a way to do that. Um, and what I might do is do that and then keep everything the same uh, and not have as much water below. The water below, if, if water is going down from, from the top into there, it's going to move the fertilizer in and it's going to dissipate a bit. However, it might still be worth seeing if we get uh, some differences in growth either way. Uh, I'm going to leave the sunflower until the morning to harvest, uh, so I, I need a bit more time with that, and I'm quite busy. Uh, and this, this here, now this here is going to go right into the garden for me. So, you know, the mat, I can see it's still pretty solid here, uh, and it's getting cold, so things break down slowly. So I'm going to kind of use this almost like a mulch. I've got some blueberry plants, I'll probably put it around. And I still have a bunch of leaves that are going to go in the garden. So this will go down like this, face down, and then I'll put some leaves over top and it'll decompose. Hopefully, and I'll take a look and see what that looks like in spring. So, so our, our first results are showing we're getting decent growth with the fiber mats, but uh, lower yield and longer cycle, longer crop cycle. But we're not seeing any water uptake problems or nutrient problems that show deficiencies. In the morning, I will juice this and, and see how it uh, tastes. And that'll sort of be the last test there. And then probably on the weekend, or maybe before, it's Tuesday now, I will do the next, um, next trial with the split up mats and think a little bit about that uh, protocol. So there we go, first round of trials with wheatgrass. Uh, when I do the sunflower harvest, I may make a video if I see something that really stands out that differentiates it. Uh, otherwise, uh, the next time you see me will be in Growing Mat versus Soil Microgreens Trials Part 2.